The global cyber attack where hackers demanded money and exploited a dangerous security hole which froze 100,000 companies in 150 countries. A major cyber attack forcing hospitals across the UK to turn away patients. The British National Health Service saying computer systems were impacted. It's an international attack and a number of countries and organizations have been affected. While victims received ransom demands, paying those demands to not unlock their computers. Cybersecurity experts are warning that the rogue regime could be behind that global cyber attack. Today we're diving into one of the biggest cyber attacks of the past decade, the infamous WannaCry ransomware strike of 2017. On May 12th of that year, a self-replicating ransomware worm called WannaCry started spreading like wildfire across the globe. This nasty malware encrypted files on infected Windows systems and demanded a Bitcoin ransom payment to unlock them. The impact was massive. Within a day, WannaCry had struck over 200,000 computers in more than 150 countries. Major organizations like FedEx, Honda, Nissan, and even Britain's National Health Service were caught in the crosshairs, with the NHS forced to divert ambulances due to the crippling attack. Smash that like button and subscribe for a deeper dive into how WannaCry unfolded and the lasting impacts it had on cybersecurity. Drop any questions you have down in the comments. The WannaCry ransomware attack was a brutal wake-up call that quickly brought organizations around the world to their knees. While the initial blast was widespread, things could have been far worse if not for the fast actions of a security researcher. What made this cyber attack so insidious was the exploit it used to proliferate, a vulnerability called Eternal Blue that impacted older, unpatched versions of Microsoft Windows. This exploit was originally developed by none other than the U.S. National Security Agency as part of their own hacking arsenal. However, a group called the Shadow Brokers had managed to steal and then publicly release Eternal Blue after breaching the NSA's systems. While Microsoft did release patches to fix the vulnerability months before WannaCry, the attack laid bare how many organizations still failed to keep their systems updated and secured. With so many outdated Windows machines still connected to the internet, WannaCry found plenty of low-hanging fruit to infect at a rapid pace. The Shadow Brokers are a notorious hacking group that burst onto the scene in 2016 by leaking a treasure trove of potent cyber attack tools and zero-day exploits to the public. Security experts suspect the Shadow Brokers had managed to infiltrate the systems of the U.S. National Security Agency and steal these weaponized malware capabilities developed by the agency. In a leak on April 14, 2017, the Shadow Brokers released one exploit that would prove pivotal just a month later, a vulnerability called Eternal Blue that could be used to remotely compromise certain versions of Microsoft Windows. This leak gave cyber criminals and nation-state actors access to an extraordinarily effective exploit previously only in the NSA's arsenal. Microsoft, recognizing the severity of Eternal Blue, had actually released a patch for Windows systems on March 14th to fix the vulnerability and prevent these types of attacks. However, many individuals and organizations sadly failed to install this critical update in a timely manner. When the WannaCry ransomware worm was unleashed in May 2017, it strategically utilized the leaked Eternal Blue exploit as a propagation method to rapidly spread across networks worldwide. The ineffective patching of this NSA vulnerability is what allowed WannaCry to inflict such widespread damage by hopping between exposed Windows systems with ease. So while Microsoft had provided the fix weeks before, Eternal Blue's leak from the Shadow Brokers enabled WannaCry's rapid, worm-like dissemination by arming it with a devastatingly effective exploit against the many computers that remained unpitched and vulnerable. In the aftermath of the devastating WannaCry attack, authorities in the United States and United Kingdom officially accused the government of North Korea of being responsible for unleashing the ransomware worm. However, this attribution has been met with skepticism from some cybersecurity researchers. While the two nations stood firmly behind claims that WannaCry originated from the Pyongyang regime, other experts argue the evidence instead points to the North Korea-based Lazarus Group, a notorious hacking collective. Under this theory, WannaCry may have been the group's handiwork without direct sanctioning from the North Korean government itself. Taking things a step further, some analysts suggest the authorship clues implicating North Korean actors could have been deliberately planted as a false flag operation. They hypothesize that WannaCry's creators may have roots in an entirely different region, but wanted to misleadingly cast culpability on the Lazarus group. 
The difficulties of ironclad attribution in the constantly evolving cyber threat landscape mean definitively fingering the WannaCry perpetrators remains an open question. Dissenting voices push back on the government assertions, highlighting how deception, false flags, and obscuring one's origins are all part of the modern cyber criminal's toolkit. When the WannaCry ransomware began spreading like wildfire in May 2017, a young cybersecurity blogger and researcher named Marcus Hutchins quickly began analyzing the malicious code. As he reverse-engineered WannaCry, Hutchins spotted something bizarre. Before carrying out its file encrypting payload, the ransomware first queried an obscure domain. This garbled URL didn't actually exist anywhere on the live internet. But driven by curiosity, Hutchins took the seemingly innocuous step of simply registering the nonsensical domain himself. Incredibly, that small $10 decision effectively doused the raging WannaCry fire. After Hutchins registered the domain, while the ransomware kept infecting new computers, all the existing WannaCry infections across the globe simultaneously stopped operating. Hutchins had inadvertently triggered a kill switch that stopped WannaCry. Security experts theorized the ransomware authors purposely coded this domain query to detect if WannaCry was running within a sandbox, a virtualized environment used to safely study malware. Sandboxes aren't connected to the real internet, so they generate fake responses for any domain lookups by malware samples. By querying that nonsensical domain, WannaCry was trying to determine if it was inside an analysis sandbox. A lack of response would mean it was operating on a real system. But with the domain now legitimately registered by Hutchins, every WannaCry infection assumed it was in a sandbox and shut itself down. Another theory is that the spread WannaCry version was simply incomplete, with that gibberish domain hard-coded as a temporary placeholder to be replaced later with an active command and control server address before release. Regardless of the motive, Hutchins' $10 gambit extraordinarily derailed one of the worst malware attacks in recent history through a quirk in WannaCry's strange code design. His curious googling of an obscure domain may have saved billions in recovery costs globally. While Marcus Hutchins was hailed as a hero for stopping WannaCry's spread, it emerged that the young cybersecurity researcher had a darker past. Before his blogging days, Hutchins had spent years deeply immersed in the malware underworld, frequenting shadowy forums and even building and selling his own malicious code. The stunning revelation came just a few months after his WannaCry kill switch actions, when the FBI arrested Hutchins in Las Vegas. He was accused of authoring the infamous Kronos banking Trojan years earlier, a malware strain designed to steal financial data. So while Hutchins had saved untold billions by diffusing WannaCry through that $10 domain registration, his own hacker history had caught up to him. His cybersecurity skills proved to be a double-edged sword. As for WannaCry's current threat level, the specific version that went viral in 2017 is essentially neutralized thanks to Hutchins's kill switch domain stopping its execution. However, WannaCry is not extinct. As of early 2021 reports, Updated versions of the ransomware were still trying to leverage Eternal Blue to infect outdated, unpatched Windows systems. And these newer WannaCry strains removed the kill switch flaw that allowed Hutchins to stop the 2017 variant. So, while WannaCry's spread is vastly diminished, it highlights the importance of prompt software updates and patching. Any lingering unpatched systems, especially older Windows versions, remain susceptible to WannaCry and attacks exploiting Eternal Blue. Proper cybersecurity hygiene is crucial to starving WannaCry of potential targets. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button. And subscribe to my channel for more deep dives into other major cybersecurity events and hacking incidents from over the years. That's all for now. Until next time.